everybody, this is Joker Spice bringing a little spice to your life. Last time we got ourselves a handy dandy hook shot. It's awesome because we can use it to. Man, are you kidding me? My poor intro is just getting destroyed right now. To hook onto wooden objects and stuff with uh and and stuff with targets and stuff like that. And uh, this episode. We're going into the Forest Temple to save Saria. Let's do it. The Forest Temple. I love the music here. And not just here, and pretty much all the temples going forward. We got a little bit of a taste of what temples were like. Or not temples, but dungeons were like before with the, uh, with the other dungeons, but this, this is when the game really starts, at least for me. Like, we had fun before, and I know we got, like, a lot of pieces of heart and stuff, so we've completed a lot of the game, but for a story experience, this dungeon just does it for me. It's so atmospheric. All right, let's start it off by killing these wolf foes. Wanted to listen to the music a little bit before we had to interrupt it with the enemy song. Come on, dude. Awesome. When um when the composer for the for the for this particular game was composing for this game, one of the things that he wanted to do was make the music a lot more atmospheric. Instead of having a song in the temples, it feels it, it feels like you're somewhere instead. There's no particular like like, obviously there is a rhythm and, like, something in the background, but... This place feels so much more claustrophobic and... And creepy and... And... The corners are tight and... 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 You'll see as we go through the level what I mean, but... I just... I just love... I just love this temple. I lo and and it, it's such a good intro temple to what would be the rest of the game. Alright. So, as you can see, we got ourselves a small key. This is a pretty big staple in pretty much all the Zelda games, but if you haven't noticed, we actually had not gotten a single key since we've, uh, since we've started any of the dungeons. That's the first small key that we got, which is a pretty big difference um, uh, between all the dungeons and this one. This is when things get a little bit more complicated and serious. What's this? Different colored flames. Uh-oh. Oh no, the elevator from Zelda 2! It looks like unless we get those flames back, we're not going to be able to use that elevator. So it looks like we've got ourselves a new mission. Um, first things first, I would say we come over here. There's actually a golden sculpture that we can get right away, so might as well. Um, we're getting close to 50 sculpture now. I believe we have 36 of them now, or 37. Um, even though we get, we'll get 50. Like I said, we're still gonna collect a bunch more. Um, we'll just collect all the ones that we see along the way and see how much we can collect. There's no particular reason. I, I believe that's called a blue bubble that we just killed. Um, we'll see another one later. Can figure out what his actual name is. But here we've got some Stalfos. Um, if you pull out your deck units, these guys, these, because these are um, something foes enemies, deck units work really well against these guys. Unfortunately, we are not able to use deck use sticks anymore, which means that we cannot use uh, our amazing jump slash, which actually would have been stronger than the Master Sword um, because of that. All right. These guys aren't so bad, you can pretty- like, their jump slash is actually, like, their biggest downfall. Whenever they use their jump slash, they just kind of, like, leave themselves really open. Definitely wait for them to, like, make a move, or just, like, go into its quarters and use a Deku- Deku Seed. Unlike, uh, rumors and popular opinion- oh, what? Come back here, are you kidding me? There we go. 
I just want to touch it. I don't want to collect it. I just want to get a full heal. Perfect. Um, you don't have to wait for all the foes enemies to do something. You can just get in there and wreak havoc yourself. Alright, so we got two small keys so far, so we're doing pretty good. What is this thing? Yeah, a blue bubble. So, if we see any more skulls like that with different colors, you can probably imagine that they're whatever color bubbles. Uh, over here, we have this block. Uh, like we learned over by where uh, Dompe's grave is. Using the Song of Time here. Come on. There we go. We'll make that block disappear. So I think we'll just go in here. There are lots of places and spokes that we can go. But uh, I think we'll just stick around here for now. Alright, here we go. Uh oh. Let's see. Uh, we'll just kill it. Like I said, the sticks are kind of useless, but... Oh well. Here we go. So let it, what do we got here? We got this, like, hole. Oh, it actually seems more like a well than anything. But... That's not gonna lead us anywhere. Can only go so far underwater anyways. Get some vines. Um... Here we go. Oh, well, that's awkward. Like I said before, if these guys turn purple and you stop moving, they will stop trying to attack you, so that's how you get past these guys. Our hookshot wasn't going to be able to kill that top one anyways. Using your shield against these guys is pretty useful because it makes their fire go out. And there we go, we got our first big treasure chest. So that's good, let's see what's inside. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying the vibe of the Forest Temple. It's just it's just really interesting. Um, we're inside this interesting, like, castle mansion in the forest. Presumably made by real people, not Kokiri. I don't know, just because of the way the doors and stuff are. So it's, very, it's just like, what is this place doing, like, doing here? Like, why are we here? Uh, I believe we go through this way. Okay. So, I fall down here way more often than I'd like to admit. Um, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the Ferrari's Wind does. So, when you use it... It creates a warp point at the last exit you went out of. And then when you use Ferrari's Wind again... What it does is it causes the um, it causes you to warp to that exact location, uh, which is really helpful in case, like for example, we fall here when we're not supposed to, because uh, I really need to hit this switch. Uh, you cannot warp to that warp point if you've left the dungeon, though. So make sure you understand that. Um, and you don't have to return to the warp point. You can dispel the warp point too. Which I've done, because we don't need to be up here anymore. But, we're back to where we were before. Or, not quite, actually. Um, so, actually, there's a chest over there that I'd like to go get. But it made the water in that well go down. So, we are going to go ahead and take care of that. Got a chest here. Always make sure to remember that chests are made of wood and the hookshot can get them. And we can go ahead and grab this golden sculpture. Nice. Awesome. Perfect. So now that we've done that, we can go in the well. We try to go down here before, obviously. Even if we could dive down here, there's nothing really for us. Except for this awesome treasure chest at the end of the hallway that you can see. But you can't open treasure chests underwater, so it wouldn't have been super helpful. But we've got ourselves a key. Uh, man, lots of keys, eh? Well, there is a place where we could have used some keys before, but we would have had to turn back. Because there would have been another locked door behind that one. So that's why I went uh, this way instead. Alright. Thank you. 
you know, those doors kind of remind me a lot of the doors in uh, Wet Dry World in Super Mario 64 when you go to that other little town. Makes me think of that. Anywho, here we've got our first locked door. Scorchulas have nothing on us. Now that we have the hookshot, we can kill them even um, through their hard shell. So, nothing about them. We got a ledge on top of here with a door, but I don't see any way to get there, so we'll just have to ignore it for now. Link is so fun to control. He controls the same way as the, as the young Link, but he seems to... I think he takes, like, longer strides, so he might be a little faster. There are arrows painted on the floor. Thanks, Navi. I guess that means we're gonna have to move this block. Now, how is Link supposed to move these blocks like this? He is wearing the Goron's bracelet. So, if the Goron bracelet enhances your strength, that's how I think he's moving them. Because it turns out that if Link does not have the Goron's Bracelet, he cannot move this block. Um, as evidenced by, uh, um, hacking mostly. But I've played, like, the Zelda randomizers before, and, um, I've been in this dungeon without the Goron's Bracelet, and I don't think you can move these like that. But we just gotta follow the arrows on the ground. Uh, there's another exit right here. Perfect. And then, when it gets all the way flush to the wall, there we go, we can climb on top of it. Well, I actually believe that, that Link has to jump in order to get there. Link's a lot taller now, so he can actually make a lot more um, jumps than young Link was not able to do before. In fact, uh, adult Link could just stand in Zora's river where a young Link needed to swim before. All right, we're gonna have to figure out a way to push this block from the other side. Thankfully, there is a way to do just that because there's a ladder right where the block was, the other block was before. Oh, well, if we had our slingshot, we'd be able to hit this and and get some, and get something out of it or unlock something, but. Unfortunately, our slingshot's useless. I wonder why that is. My theory is because it's made out of wood, and that the wood would have just rotted over time, but I don't know. People have wooden tables and chairs for a lot longer, so I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's just too small for us now? I don't know. I feel like the boomerang is not like that. I don't think the boomerang could be too small. And it's not like we haven't seen Link in other games use the exact same items before. So I'm not really sure what the deal is. But either way, we can't use the slingshot. Perfect. So once we get on top of here, there's a lot of block pushing in this, in this part of the dungeon. Get into this little room. Here we got another keyhole, um, but and we got an eye on top of the door, but again, we can't really... Whoa, what's going on here? That's really freaky. Um, I'm actually going to put a warp point right here. It's a pretty helpful warp point. I think it'll help us in the future. We'll leave that right there for now. But yeah, this is a really creepy corridor. It's all twisted. I don't... The gravity is all weird too, because we are. Our perspective is definitely getting all wonky. Very crazy. Watch for the shadows of the monsters that hang from the ceiling. I wonder what she's talking about. Oh, you can see her shadow is getting bigger. We run away. You can see that this disgusting creature tried to attack us. Unless we kill it, it'll just keep trying to attack us, so we gotta keep running away. If this thing lands on you, it'll kick you out of the dungeon. This is this version, a game's version of a wall master. Wall masters are very creepy indeed. What's that? There's a treasure chest here. Hmm. 
Can't get it though. Way too high. And even if it was close to the ground, we can't open a treasure chest that's sideways. Oh well, let's just keep going. Hmm. An empty frame. Kinda boring. Oh. Oh, this one has the picture of a Poe. Oh, that it's gone now. And now it's there. Clearly we've got some puzzle here, but... Don't know if we have all the equipment we need. Hmm. This... This is the same torch we saw at the entrance to the temple, isn't it? I guess it is? Navi's very observant. Here we go, we got a Stalfos. Um, if you look at your dungeon map, you will notice that this room is actually above the room where we fought the last couple of Stalfos. So make sure you don't fall in that hole, otherwise you're going to go straight down into that other room. Stalfos can for some reason walk on the air, but we cannot, so be careful about that. We did put up Ferrari's Wind, but I'd rather not use it quite yet and waste some magic. Perfect. However, we got some more Stalfos to deal with. Hope you guys like fighting these guys, because these guys are here for a while. These guys are big, though. It's weird to think that a human can transform to this, transform into this. Presumably, um, that guy that we saw in the forest is now one of these creatures. That's what that girl was saying. Whoa, holy slowdown. That was weird. The game just lagged a lot for some reason. Come on. Show me your moves. I could be using the deck unit, but I didn't feel like going into the menu to switch it up, so sorry about that. Alright, let's get our compass. Oh. It's not a compass! It's actually the fairy bow. So this replaces our slingshot. And trust me, this thing is way better than the slingshot. Well, I guess they function pretty much exactly the same. Instead of pellets, this thing uses arrows. I believe this thing does more damage as well. Um, yeah, this thing is awesome. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think we exited... I think where we want to go has these, like, blue... Not the blue carpet, but, like, the... This, like, pinwheel symbol. We're actually going to go this way. Because now that we have the bow and arrow, we can do something about these weird paintings that we're seeing. Shoot this one. We can shoot this one. I'm going to shoot the corner. Oh. There we go. And then, shoot this one. And with that, the Poe has nowhere left to run. And go ahead and squish it. My L targeting makes these guys really annoying to deal with. So you can try not to L target them as best as you can. Or do a very quick L target just to do a jump slash. Getting up close to them and using your shield against their attacks twice will make them appear again. Ugh, they, got, they have a lot of health. If only we had a, a way to deal more damage. Oh well. There we go. It's already dead. When you kill one of these special Poe, we'll actually unlock one quarter of the key needed to use the elevator. And of course, we get this little treasure chest too, which is always good. Sweet! We got a small key. Perfect. I'm wondering if we can get some magic. Because well, we've only got half of our magic meter right now. Magic meter looks so pathetic now that we've gotten like 10 hearts. Come on, come on, there we go. Oh, well, I thought I saw green, I thought it was magic, but it was not magic. Alright, so this room is like a mirror image of that other room. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing here. Instead of a red pole this time, we got a ourselves the blue one. Making this dungeon seem really easy, but this this stomped me when I was a kid. 
I had absolutely no idea what to do. Um, because it's not super obvious, like, for example, I didn't know about the, the like, the door of time stuff. Um, I think I, cause like, I don't know. Well, I'm trying to think, I, I should have known, because like, you have to learn about that. But I just did not solve the puzzles there, I think. I don't know. Wow. I almost jump slashed the wrong thing, but I pressed the button before I L-targeted that thing. There we go. Down and out. It's nice that it drops some arrows. Oh, oops. <laughs> That's right, if you stand on a- if you're where a treasure chest is, when it spawns, you just go right on top of it. But, uh, alright, this has to be the- This is the compass this time. Unless we're getting two dungeon items. In that case, I'm not that mad. Nah, it's the compass. Um, which is good, because sometimes it gets a little confusing when you enter a symmetrical room. Don't exactly know which direction you're supposed to be going. But now we got our compass, so that's great. We can also find some hidden treasure chests, too. And let's keep going. Luckily, we got that key from the red po, so we can keep going forward. Oh no, we're in another one of those twisty rooms. Watch for the shadows, the monsters that hang from the ceiling. Hmm. Another floor master. Careful you're not on a ladder when the floor master hits. Otherwise, uh, you're not gonna have a good time. Looks like we're gonna have to turn back though, because we do not have the last small key needed to unlock uh, that uh, door. Anything in this room that we could use or do? Unfortunately not. There's nothing here. There is a hole on the wall over there, but we can't really get up to it. There's no targets in there for us. So this is a good opportunity for us to use our thing. If you remember, there was an eyeball right on top of this door. Hitting this thing will cause the corridor to straighten up. I'm going to use uh, Ferrari's Wind again, because eventually when we get that key, we're going to have to come back here and re-scriggle up that, uh, that, uh, that corridor again. But now this hallway is straight, and we can go into this room at a completely different angle. Now we can get this really schmancy treasure chest. Nothing, we haven't seen anything like this before. And with that, we have got the boss key. So, unlike the previous dungeons, even though they all had this third, like, thing here, none of them needed a boss key in order to enter the final boss room. But this one, and all the next temples as well, will require a key. So, it's really important to know that. Oh. Actually, we're just gonna go right in here. Perfect. So, we got a whole uh, new area to go to. We're not going through the other area. I'm hoping one of these enemies will drop magic. Killing these guys will open this door. I wonder what will lead us. Oh! We're here. Ew. This thing is gross. Couple Deku sticks. If we go through here, this will lead us back to that room. Where I said that, where there was like a door up here. This is the only way to get up here. Um, but there's no really a reason to come into this room again. Actually, there is one treasure chest that we can get in that room, but we'll get it in a second. First, we're going to go deal with this. So this is not a wall master. This is a floor master. It's different because it's on the floor. I don't know. When you kill it, it'll actually transform into three separate floor masters. If you let any of them uh, live, they will become full-fledged floor masters. You want to kill them as quickly as possible. Otherwise, they'll just keep splitting up and splitting up. These things drop magic, which is pretty awesome. And, uh... Now we got that key we were looking for. So that's great. Clearing this dungeon in no time. 
The next treasure chest is not particularly useful. So if you want to go ahead and skip it, you can. Um, if you want to skip it, the best way to do that would just be to go back and shoot that eyeball again. Uh, the one where we played Ferrari's win. Um, but this could be useful if you've, I don't know, if you don't have a really good shot. But now that we've got something to shoot with, we can shoot this eyeball. We can get ourselves another treasure chest. This has arrows though, so again, it's not the biggest issue. So, as you can probably uh, tell, the silver eyeballs are a switch. Like a switch that you can turn on and off. And the golden eyeballs are switches that you can only turn on. You can't hit them again in order- oh, wait, what? Oh. Was it already squiggly? That's weird, you usually need to turn it back. I don't know what happened. Because I want it to be all squiggly now. There we go. I don't know, that was weird. But now that we got that key, we can open the room where the green bubbles are. Oh, okay. That was weird. I all targeted on the treasure chest even though I've already opened it. There we go. Take a little shortcut. Get a couple style points. We're doing pretty good. You know, in all my other Let's Plays that I'm doing right now, I'm kind of obsessed with money and, and collecting as much of it as I can. I mean, I guess in this one I was a little obsessed with it too, trying to get that big wallet. But really, I just wanted to get the upgrades. I just like upgrading Link in these Zelda games just as much as I possibly can. Getting everything and just demolishing any enemy I come across. Alright. Oh man, I did not get that. If you are on a ladder, when the Mole Master comes, it'll just grab you. It doesn't care where you are. Alright, just ignore these enemies. Unlike the blue bubbles, they won't come after me, so I don't really care. Awesome. So here we got this room. Um, we got this switch, but it's covered in ice. We got this one torch in the center of the room. There's a couple ways you can do it. The first way is to do this, and it's probably the way they intended you to do it. But you can melt that ice with dense fire. And there's an item that you can get later in the game. Um, that can also melt that ice as well. The thing about um, older Zelda games is that typically the only reason why you can't advance in the game is because of the items that you have. If you had every item to begin with, you wouldn't have to worry. Um, you wouldn't have to worry at all about what kind of um, about the story progress that you can make. G-Spice, watch out! The ceiling is falling down! All that to say is that if we had that item... Uh, well, actually, all that to say is that if we really want to, we could stop doing the forest temple right now, and we could go do a different temple. Go to a different part of the world and, and do that. Alright, let's see. Just another couple bundle of arrows. So if we want to go to the next temple, we could. Pretty much all you need is the dungeon item in order to ad advance, and we could just keep going. So we could leave right now, but we will not do that. Got another painting of another Poe. We'll hit it. Uh-oh. Another block puzzle. This one's not very complicated. There are five blocks. One of them is not like the other. And what you want to do is you want to push all the blocks together to make a picture. And you have a time limit to do so. If you do not do this time limit, I believe the blocks just like disappear, I think. It's kind of a strict time limit, I guess. But you have more than enough time to complete it, so don't worry about it. Unless for some reason you're just having a hard time pushing these blocks, like I am? Oh, I don't think I have enough time to complete this puzzle anymore. 
Oh, that's crazy. Well, don't be like me. Be smarter than me. I actually don't know what happens when you fail this puzzle. I guess I'm about to find out. I was so close, too. Oh, maybe not. Oh, one more push! Wow. That was actually super lucky. <laughs> There we go. Come on. No, don't run away. You have to die. Again. A second death. Come on. Oh, I forgot. All of these Poe's have names. I specifically remember this Poe's name because her name is Amy and it's that's a Sonic character's name. Um, I think the other ones have just like Ruth and Death and something as names. But, um, it's just a Poe. It's just a green Poe. They behave the same way. They, the only difference is that they have a little bit more health. I believe they... Oh, they do not drop pole souls, so you cannot collect them. Come on. There we go. They are dead. Excellent. With that, we've already done uh, we've already done three of the four uh f flames that we needed also bows and bow uh, a bow and arrow can kill the uh sculpture super easily so we just have to find that purple poe i wonder where it could be we've been everywhere in this dungeon oh it's right there but yeah so far we've been literally in every room of the dungeon except for the basement two floor where the boss is. Alright, let's kill this one. Oh shoot, it's multiplying just like just like Lee in Paper Mario. Oh my goodness. It wasn't obvious, the one that is spinning around is the one that we have to kill. We cannot use our uh, sword on it because it'll always stay a certain distance away from you. Hard to call this a mini boss because it's not very strong. Um, and it doesn't do a lot of damage. I believe a first- I guess a first time player might only have six hearts at this point if they're not collecting any pieces of heart. Which could make the game a little bit harder at that point, but... I don't- th I, n I never found this guy to be that... hard. There we go. This Poe always made me think of Knights. Um, I'll put a picture on the screen right now, but... Knights is this game that Sega produced, or rather Sonic Team um, made, and uh, has a cool little gesture design. As a, I really, as a person who is kind of using that whole gesture design for his channel, I definitely got inspired a little bit by Knights. Cool. So we're here. The boss is supposedly this way, but there is a grate in the way. What can we do? There are these big slabs of the wall sticking out for no particular reason. And on the map, it doesn't show that it's like, you know, a wall. Whew, I yawned, my bad. Hitting it doesn't make that bomb sound, but if you notice, we can grab it. Push the wall. And this entire room kind of spins around. Let's see. Got a Skulltula here. Is that all the Skulltulas in this dungeon? No. There's one more. And I believe it's also down here. So we just gotta keep going into this these rooms and see what's up. Um, I believe we pushed this one, so we'll push it again. Nothing in this door. Oh, I think I pushed it. Oh, no I didn't. We're good. Alright, can't go through there either, so we'll keep pushing this. Here we got a switch. There we go, it opens that grate. On the other side, we got nothing. So I think I'll just keep on pushing this. 
There is a treasure chest, though, I'd like to get. Um, oh, we opened a grate, but we did not open the grate we wanted. Man, I wish, like, these slabs had markers on them, because I probably ended up pushing the wrong one. There we go. We got our treasure chest. With a bundle of arrows. Awesome. Alright, so we need to find another switch. There we go, we found the other switch. Now that we've done that, I believe if we reset the room, it should let us go to the boss. Uh, yep. Okay, so I think all I have to do is push this one more time in this direction. There we go. The final switch. And now, the final lock. This boss can be a little bit of a doozy if you've never played this game before. Oh. I think I missed the golden skull Oh well, whatever. Alright, let's beat him. I wonder who we're gonna fight. Maybe one big ghost or something? Like, like Big Boo? Huh. There's lots of paintings, but I don't see anything weird going on with them. Kind of spooky, though. That almost looks like Ganon's castle in the distance, but not quite. Well, I don't see Syria. I don't see the boss. Guess I'll just leave. What? What? How did he get here? How did he bring his horse in here? Oh, wait a second. That's not Ganondorf. Evil spirit from beyond. Phantom Ganon. Alright. Phantom Ganon. People love this guy. So Phantom Ganon is going to come out in one of these paintings. However, one of the paintings is a fake. You'll notice that the real one is just a little bit ahead of the fake painting. So you'll have to keep note of that. So let's see. That was the real one. You can shoot him as soon as that portal opens. Yeah, as soon as he comes out, you can just shoot him. But only to shoot him a couple times this way. Sometimes the paintings are right next to each other. There we go, I got him. And then you can see which one. Oh, and then when you hit him three times, he leaves the painting. So, this is Phantom Ganon. Um, answer his magic attacks with an attack of your own. He shoots these electrical uh, magic things. Oops. That wasn't supposed to happen. If you... Alright. Sorry about that. If you hit it, you will be able to do damage to him. It'll hit him himself and he'll not realize it. Um, anybody who's played this game knows that you can use an empty bottle. Oh my goodness. I need a better angle. Come, come on, shoot me your ball. You can use a um, an empty bottle to, to send his attacks right back at him. You don't have to use a sword. So, that's always fun. Although, you have to be pretty precise with the angle a little bit, if, especially if he's moving around. As he takes damage, he'll volley the ball a little bit before. But once it gets too fast for him... Come on. Oh man, again? Alright. I was gonna say, he doesn't take that many hits to die, but oh well. 
I love how his feet just kind of ragdoll in the air. Whoa! I've never seen I've never seen him use that attack before. That must be like his desperation attack. I'm just gonna use the sword now. I don't have to mess around anymore. I'm actually almost dead. Um, am I gonna die to Phantom Ganon? That'd be pretty embarrassing. I'm pretty sure I had full hearts. I died. I can't believe it. That's why we have fairies, folks. I'm sure Gant Phantom Ganon is very upset that we had a fairy. If only any of these bosses learned to, to bring them. Oh man. I'm actually better with the bottle. I might use that instead. Nope. Just stop laughing at me. I almost did not hit it. Um, obviously shooting your bow and arrow at this point in the fight is not going to do anything. You'll just deflect it. Oh my god, this has to be the last hit, right? Oh, if only I hit it one more time. Oh well. Hey kid, you did quite well. It looks like you may be gaining some slight skill. But you have defeated only my phantom. When you fight the real me, it won't be so easy. What a worthless creation that ghost was. I will banish it to the gap between dimensions. Well, that's sad. Created to destroy us, and now doomed to suffer in limbo. Oh well. Let's collect our prize and get out of here. We got a heart container, and now we have a new row of hearts to fill up. We got nine more hearts in this game to get. And now, let's leave the Forest Temple. Hopefully, now that we've destroyed Phantom Ganon, we can see Saria. Hopefully that saved her. Thank you. Because of you, I could awaken as a sage. I am Saria, the sage of the Forest Temple. I always believed that you would come, because I know you. No. You don't have to explain it to me. Because it is destiny that you and I can't live in the same world. I will stay here as the Forest Sage and help you. Now please, take this medallion. Here we go, our second medallion. We got the forest medallion. Saria awakens as a sage and adds her power to ours. Saria will always be your friend. I wonder who said that. Ourselves to ourselves? Snavi? I don't know. I definitely forgot about this cutscene, so this is gonna be a pretty long episode. <laughs> oh well. You guys love it. <laughs> What's this little guy? Hi there! I'm the Geku Tree Sprout! Because you and Syria broke the curse on the forest temple, I can grow and flourish. Thanks a lot. Hey, have you seen your old friends? None of them recognize you with your grown up body, did they? Just because the Kokiri never grow up, even after seven years, they're still kids. You must be wondering why only you are grown up. Well, as you might have already guessed, you are not a Kokiri! You are actually a Hylian! 
I'm happy to finally reveal this secret to you. Some time ago, before the King of Hyrule unified this country, there was a fierce war in our world. One day, to escape from the fires of the war, a highly mother and a baby boy entered this forbidden forest. The mother was gravely injured. Her only choice was to entrust the child to the great Deku Tree, the guardian spirit of the forest. The Deku Tree could sense that this was a child of destiny, whose fate would affect the entire world, so he took him into the forest. After the mother passed away, the baby was raised as a Kokiri, and now finally, the day of destiny has come. You are a Hylian, and we're always bound to leave this forest. And now, you have learned your own destiny, so you know what you must do. That's right, you must save the land of Hyrule. Now, j -Spice, Break the curses in all the temples, and return peace to Hyrule. So that's cool. The Great Deku Tree might be dead, but it seems to have reun uh, reincarnated into this little seed. This seed knows everything the Great Deku Tree did, clearly. So, it's like the De Great Deku Tree never died. It's really, it's really nice. Weirdly enough, the Great Deku Tree's mouth has been closed. I don't know who closed it. But, um, oh, well, that's weird. The light disappears. Huh. Hmm. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. We had a great time today. I uh, completed the whole forest temple in one go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm not sure if I'll be doing that for all the temples, though. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like that run, go ahead and like it. Uh, tell me what you thought of the Forest Temple, and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see what happens in the next episode. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.